welcome to today's webinar with the title our flex solutions how much flexibility do you need the speaker of today's webinar is mr klaus schilmulak head of project management in our plant niedernhall and now i wish you lots of fun and new information thank you very much andreas and welcome to our listeners um yes my name is klaus schilmulak um I'm now for nearly 20 years in PCB business, and all of the time I'm working on rigid flex solutions, yes, or, or PCB production. So um, what we see a lot of questions uh, which are coming from customer side um, concerns the flexibility of the flex, which would be the best solution for my application. Um, and that's the reason why we started uh, this webinar. So what we will do today is um, I want to show you, um, we call it the full package of flex solutions. This means all the different types of, of PCBs um, concerning flex. Uh, another point will be flexibility or bendability. This means how do the different options perform. Um, we will show you um, the digital available stack ups. For your EDA software, uh, which is a way which is available on the uh, homepage of Wood Electronic, um, these are standard stack ups. Uh, and of course, that's not all uh, you can get from Wood Electronic. We also have, uh, would say, customized optimization points or customized stack ups. Uh, that's the point project based optimization and. At least, of course, um, I will tell you something about flexibility and cost in relationship. Um, that's the last point, but not the most interesting, I think. <laughs> so, um, because it's a technical webinar. So, um, we will start, um, right, um, spectrum of VE flex solutions. Um, all about flex or PCB, of course, is controlled by IPC standards. Um, for rigid flex design and, and, and flexible design, um, you will find all information in the IPC 2223. Um, this paper concerns about dielectric flexible films like polyamide or polyester. Uh, in this webinar, we talk only about polyamide. Um, that's one point. Another point is um, copper foils are defined. Um, Copper foils like ED or RA copper, this means electro deposit or rolled annealed copper. There are nearly eight different types uh, in the IPC um, for copper foils. Um, next point is a completely flexible or a combination of rigid and flex printed circuit board, which is part of uh, the IPC, which is described in the IPC. Um, and of course, most uh, interesting now is the application one is a flex to install of course we call it static or application b uh, it's permanent uh, which means dynamic um, bending bending is always um, um yes it would, would say um kind of tension and compression um of course tension is on on the outer layer com uh, on, on the outer radius the compression is on the inner radius of the flex part. Uh, there's no um, exact definition or, or scale of bendability in the IPC um, because there are large numbers of influences. I will show you this in the next point. Well, so we will start with a short survey um, before you get any information. So. Uh, we want to know what are the different flex solutions you already know. Uh, we have a multiple choice, so we will start it. Okay, so now make your choice, please. We have passed 10% participation already, 30%. We will wait until we have around about 70 or 80 percent normally we have reached 60 percent 
we are quite fast compared to the US election. Okay, so we have 70%. I will wait five more seconds. And now we will close the poll and show you the result. So we can see that, of course, Richard Flex is well known, but also some of you already know Ben Flex and Slim Flex. So it's quite good spread it here. Okay, um, that's our first survey. We will directly make the next one. Uh, uh, now we want to know uh, what different flex solutions you are already using today. So you have again multiple answers. Okay, we have already 40%, 50%, 60%. So, wow, you are really fast today. And it seems that Bandflex is not used mm -hmm. till today. Mm -hmm. We'll see in a second. So, I close the poll and show you the result. So we will learn about Benflex in the next minutes, of course, and hopefully you can use that in the future. So again, Richard Flex has the most use in our participant area. Okay, so that's the result. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, what I want, want to start with the spectrum of all the flex, different flex solutions. Um, so, I told you about what the IPC is defining. Um, so, now you see there are a lot of options from this few points. The first point is we call it semi flex or bent flex. This is roughly a full rigid board. Uh, where we thinned the FO4. You can see it here. We thinned the FO4. This is done by defined uh, depth milling, or we can use spacers. I will come back to this later. So there are different possibilities to create these, I would say, thin FO4 part. The next uh, Stack up possibility is we have a 1F 3RI. The, the, the example is an eight layer multilayer. Same here for rigid ones. Uh, for rigid ones, of course, um, we have a 1F 7RI. The, the copper layer is on the outside of the flex. You know, and we have in, in the rigid area, in summary, eight layers. Another possibility for, for the stack up is you have two layers on the outside, two copper layers on the outside. And of course, you have always a polyamide foil. Uh, next point is you have the, the polyamide in the middle of, of the stack up. This can be can can have two two copper layers, or you can have four copper layers. They depend on the layout, of course. Um, Next possibility is um, you have a full flex with two layers. We call it pure flex, or you have a slim flex. Uh, slim flex means you have a multi-layer. Um, would say if you have up to four, six, eight layers um, with with uh, a, a lot of well, no, sorry, a lot of with a few elimination steps. We start with a two-layer, and we have with every elimination we have two more layers. With sequential, sequential build up. All these stack ups are, of course, available with HDI technology. So, we will get more detail about the semi flex or bend flex. This means, once more, it's a rigid multi layer, uh, and we cr create a thin uh, rigid layer by depth milling, or we create it, I would say, Transforming the technology the technology for rigid flex to a rigid multilayer. 
we start with the semi-flex and the difference between the semi-flex and bent flex. For the semi-flex, we use the TG135. Reason is all the other FF4 materials have uh, fillers, uh, anorganic fillers. Um, so the material TG135 is much more flexible than all the other materials with higher TG. Um, we use ED foil on the outside, of course. That's a, st a standard foil for, for all um, the same PCBs. Um, and of course, we have through holes. We put plated copper, we plated copper, an additional copper layer on the outside. Uh, we use flexible solder mask in the flex area. And for creating the thin FF4, we have a depth axis control depth milling. And we have a 45 grade space here on the, on the overlap to the, between the rigid and the flex part. This means we have directly, directly mill in the glass resin matrix. Okay. Um, another point is um, the copper has always been on the outside, on the outer radius of, of the bending radius. Uh, sorry, on the, on, the, on the outside of the bending radius. Um, it's it's no, not allowed to, to do this on the inside. The diff, that's a, a very important point to the bent flex solution. Here we can have the copper on the inner and outer layer. Reason for that is uh, we don't have any milling on the glass resin matrix. This means means the glass is always uh, right in the resin matrix, and there's no, would say, um, I would let me say, destroying um, of the glass fibers. Uh, how can we do that? Um, for the bent flex technology, we use spacers. Or we take uh, a thin FR4 cores, this one or two layer, doesn't matter. Or we use low flow prepacks. So we have a lot of different possibilities uh, for manufacturing this kind of technology. Um, another important point for the rigid material in the flexed area, we can use material with TG135 up to 170. For the copper and the copper plating, it's the same as for semi-flex. We have ED copper in the flex area, and we have plated additional plated copper. On the right side, you can see um, the main difference. Um, on the top, you see the depth milling area, and you see the glass fibers. You can see it here. Um, on the other side, you see the band flex. You can't see any glass fiber because the glass fibers are totally integrated in the, in the resin matrix. Another point um, you can see in the micro sections below the pictures, um, you see the 45 degree face here for the semi-flex. On the other side, you see um, the micro section from the bent flex. Yes, there's no more face. Um, and you see it's, the, the depth is very defined with this solution. So um, for rigid flex, um, we have, I would say, uh, roughly two main, main, main solutions. We have the, the 2F in the middle, and we have a 2, 2F on the outside. Of course, you can have a 1F as well. That's not a problem. Multilayer stack up is always done with polyamide. One time, say, in the middle, one time on the outside, on the outer layers. Um, we always use in this area here spacers between the cover lay and all these, oh, sorry, and all the rigid materials. Um, or we use a low flow prepack. This means we want to avoid to get uh, resin on the cover lay area right here, okay, on this side. Uh, for rigid materials, we can use TG 130 up to 220 degrees. Uh, we always use adhesiveless polyamide. Um, we always have cover lay in the flexed area. Of course, there's no more flexible solder mask uh, uh, in the application. Uh, and we have the possibility to use uh, rolled annealed or ED copper in this area here. Okay. 
On the right side, you see a micro section um, of a 10 layer board with eight flex layers. Yeah. Um, of course, this can be more layers, flexible layers, that's not a problem. The only problem which is left is the price for these solutions. So we come um, to the point flexibility or bendability. Um, I want to start with a few definitions. Uh, the first one is, I think, most important. Any PCB material is flexible if it's thin enough. This means um, if you have a, it doesn't matter which material, if it's FO4 or if it's just resin or, or if it's uh, a, poly a polyamide foil, um, if it's thin enough, enough, it is flexible. Um, the only dif difference between all these materials um, say is the stiffness. And the stiffness describes the resistance of a body to elastic uh, deformation. Another important point um, is the flexibility. Um, that's the ability to adapt to changing circumstances and most important, of course, the ability to bend. And this happens easily. Bendability describes the forming process and bending stress acts always in the forming zone. So we have um, uh, tens tension and compression in this area. Bending radius describes the radius uh, with which the material can be bent without cracking. Um, the material is bent as closely as possible for 180 degrees and the radius is determined on the inside of the material. You can see it on the right side. Um, another very important point is rolling direction. I told you already about uh, rolled annealed copper foil. Um, for flexibility, it is very important uh, to look on the direction of the, of the, of the annealing uh, copper. Um, it's fiber-like structure, uh, which is created by this uh, rolling of the copper. Um, and the elongation of the fibers has, to, has always to be in the rolling direction. You can see it on the right, left side, sorry. On the right side, you see it, that's, that's the wrong uh, direction uh, for bending. Um, so every advantage of the rolled annealed copper foil gets lost if you do it this way. So, um, I told you about bendability and copper foils and polyamide. So the next answer, uh, question, which, sorry, uh, which we have for you is polyamide laminate is used for rigid flex printed circuit boards. For how many bending cycles is the material specified by, new, by the manufacturer? Um, manufacturer, I think we want to know, I would say the most um, well-known manufacturer and that's DuPont. So everybody think, knows who's handling about flex, knows uh, the supplier DuPont. So we want to have a look on his specification data. Okay, you have four choices. Please choose one of them. So we've got around about 50%. We will wait another around about 10 seconds. Okay, 60%, 65%. Okay, so now I will close the poll and show the result. Okay, um, of course we will answer this question. Um, I just uh, need to wait a few minutes. Um, so um, I want to show you the difference between static and dynamic application. Um, one point is keep the bend for a static application, keep the bending radius always as large as possible, of course. Um, for the build up of the flexible layers, you can use polyamide or FO4 for this application. Um, the minimum bending radius should be 10 times the thickness of the finished flexible printed circuit board. Flex PCB should preferably be able to follow their natural curve in the band. Um, this means the bending radius should normally be always in the middle of the flex uh, 
section. Uh, for F04 semiflex printed circuit boards, the use of a bending support performing can be useful because uh, that's the next point. The F04 material, are, which is normally about 250 micron thickness, and polyam, but also polyamide with a high copper layer count or a high thickness of the polyamide in the flex area can describe it's more as less stiff. This, this means they are not more no more flexible. Um, of course, in, in, a, in, a, in a I would say in a, in a, uh, in a thing a narrow in a narrow, narrow way. Um, so um, they are more or less stiff. They, they have to have, you have to need you need high strengths to bring them in the bending in a bending form. So on the right side, you find guidelines for everyday practice. Uh, the first three are polyamide constructions um, with, with the diameter and the flex area from 120 up to 300 microns. And you see the minimum bending, bending radius on the right side. For F04 semi-flex or bend flex, the thickness is, is that much is, is, is higher than for, for, for the for the polyamide for the smallest polyamide. Uh, but what you see for the same thickness, the bending radius is much higher than for the polyamide. So now we come to dynamic construction and applications. So construction construction in the flexible layers. Uh, are done by polyamide and acrylic adhesive. So, of course, we use the polyamide, copper, and we use a cover layer to protect the copper. So, this is therefore we use an acrylic adhesive in combination with the polyamide. Neutral axis should always be in the middle of the flex layer and use identical materials on both sides of the tracks. And, of course, use rolled anneal copper. And the orientation of the rolling direction should be always parallel to the bending direction. One important point is never use plated through holes in the bending areas for dynamic application. So now we come back to the question for the survey. Um, you see the specification from DuPont for the Pyralux AP, that's the standard flex material. Um, which is well known. Um, you see here, uh, typical material is 50 micron polyamide with 18 or 35 micron copper. Here, here for us, uh, DuPont specified 6,000 bending cycles, not more and not less, but it's only 6,000. This means, this means uh, for every application for dynamic um, use, um, it needs a specific uh, um, qualification for the number of bending cycles. So for everyday practice, for, for one, I would say if there's nothing special for a, a, a PCB with polyamide with one, one copper layer, um, diameter should be 120 micron and the, uh, the thickness and the radius should be more than 12 millimeters. For a two layer, the thickness is about 200 micron, and the radius is then, then uh, 30 millimeters. And I told you about already about uh, stiffness of material. Uh, flex layers, flex uh, layers with more than four copper layers are not recommended, of course. Another important point for dynamic application is um, the traces should not be directly arranged on top of each other, as you see it here in this, this point, there should always be, I would say, a shift between the, la the layers on from top to bottom. So we come to digital stack ups. Um, you can see it here. Um, we have different possibilities, of course. That's the opportunities I showed you already before. Um, 
we have different possibilities for, for EDA tools. You can, we have stack ups for Cadence, we have stack ups for LTL, Altium, of IPC stack ups. Um, you can import this, uh, you can download this stack ups and you can import it directly in your EDA tool. EDA tool, sorry. Um, we have to do different stack ups for flex rigid layers inside. Flex rigid layers outside, two layers, four layers, and for all the flex, the only flex, just flex uh, stack ups with stiffener, or for the slim flex build ups. So, why uh, did we do this? Of course, um, first point is to avoid errors. Um, but by importing directly the stack ups, you avoid, avoid uh, all possible uh, errors. In, in the layout design. Um, you can increase the productivity, of course, because uh, you get you can download the design directly. We have proven stack ups. Um, this, this makes the manufacturability, manufacturability of the PCB and the reliability um, sure. This means uh, we have a lot of experience using these stack ups. Um, and of course, um, it's achieving safety uh, because of uh, because it's cost optimized standards. Um, materials are on stock, so uh, we don't uh, lose time by ordering materials and wait uh, when you have higher for the uh, delivery of the material. So it's cost effective, and you have high quality and short delivery times. Of course, these are all standard stack ups. Um, uh, we offer you, all, I would say, any customized stack up without any limits. Um, key factors here for our the material in the bending area. Uh, we can have polyamide up from 25 to 125 micron in 25 micron steps. Um, we have more than 10 different coverlay types on stock. Um, this always concerns the thickness of the coverlay, uh, sorry, of the, of the polyamide foil and the type and thickness uh, of the adhesive of the coverlay. So we have uh, epoxy or we have acrylic adhesive for the coverlays. Um, the thickness of the PCB should be uh, in the bending area more than 135, 130 microns, sorry. Um, of course, this could be thinner, and of course, this could be thicker. So uh, it depends on the lay on, on the layer, on a stack up, sorry, uh, and of the materials and layers you need. On copper type, we can use ED or RA uh, copper to roll the new copper. Uh, important is the direction of the rolling process, and of course, this has a high influence on the panelization of the PCB. So we, we look on our, our panel uh, to have the, the PCB in the right direction. And it's very important to, to know which, uh, if we have two or more flex sections, which direction um, is used for dynamic bending. So uh, in the design, we can look on conductor routing or grid or hatching in the flex area. Um, we have process guidelines, of course. Um, which we can discuss with you uh, if you need your, your process. Um, so, um, and of course, um, this project-specific solution can be all, only optimized uh, where the requirements are specified. So we have to be in contact with you uh, and discuss all these uh, points. So uh, I would think this is an important foil, but not the only one, because uh, we have a look on the flexibility, flexibility and costs. Um, but keep in mind, this is only an estimation. Um, you see the in red color the relative costs, in gray color the bending cycles. Look here and here, and, here. Um, and it's just an overview, starting from a Six-layer multi-layer with 100% uh, 
cost relative costs. Um, these costs uh, increased from a, from a semi to semi flex to 125. We have to, uh, additional processes, of course. Um, we go to band flex with 170 percent relative costs. Um, you see, it's, it's, it's a rich, it's a rigid multilayer in the beginning, but we we need uh, for this kind of, of technology a lot of technology we use in the rigid for the rigid flex PCBs. That's the reason for the higher costs. Um, but what you see also see can you can see uh, the bending cycles are nearly doubled for this. Of course, these are all uh, flex to install application. Next step, uh, the cost increasing is uh, the first solution with polyamide. Um, the price is nearly doubled from, from the multi-layer price. So we use the polyamide, of course, the material has higher prices and we have a lot of uh, say more processes and, and different processes and processes which are nearly parallel in, in production. So the logistic is much more, let's say, difficult or different to a normal multilayer. Next step is a 2F. Now we have two layers, two, two copper layers in the flex area, um, which is nearly the price for the 2F in the middle. Um, so we have, again, a lot of more uh, different processes for this kind of technology. Uh, number of bending cycles is not electronic specified is the same. It's still flex to install, but it's much easier to, to bend. Uh, and you have, I would say, more more opportunities to bend. Um, and it, it's, it's a smaller bending radius, of course. Um, next step is um, to, to stack up with the layer, to the, the flexible layer inside in the middle, the 2F, if the XRE, RI, 2F, XRI with ED copper. So, um, and at least we have the same stack up with RA copper. Um, you see um, the bending numbers increase for RA copper. Of course, these are not 6,000 because we don't know the application um, and we don't know exactly the really bending radius. Um, this has to be checked or controlled by um, after, after um, assembling and manufacturing on your side. Okay, okay. so um, we have finished the webinar, and but at least we want to give you another chance for uh, an answer. We want to ask you, what is the reason for the decision for Flex Solutions PCB? Again, you have multiple answers. Okay, we have uh, already 30% participation, 40%, 50%. Keep on going, guys. 60%. We will wait another 10 seconds, roundabout. And then I will close the poll. Okay. So this is what we've got from you. So the main answer is, it depends on the situation, on the installation position. Um, the other two points are also very important. System codes, cost to analyze uh, and reliability requirements, around about 32 or 30. Six percent. Okay, thank you. So now we are at the end of this webinar. Um, not the end, um, the end of the presentation. But um, now we have the chance to have more and more questions uh, concerning flex rigid applications. Mm -hmm.